everybody. Welcome back to Adobe Illustrator for Cartographers. I'm Dr. Heath Robinson. This lesson I'm going to introduce you to the Blur tool, which will help you produce some pretty neat effects for the distinction between land and water. Distinguishing between land and water in cartography is very, very important, making it very easy for your user to determine which is which. So we want to do that here on our map, not only by color, we might want to do that with a color gradient that approximates the difference between shallower and deeper water. What if we used our color blue right there for our, our base color of our ocean, but we wanted it to be a little bit lighter around each one of those islands and around the coastline to simulate shallower water that gets deeper? We can use the blur tool to get that kind of effect. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer to store the shallow water in. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call it shallow water. So this is where we'll be drawing all of that material. And we've got everything else locked that's unlocked so that it's ready to go. Now in order to create this effect it's actually very very simple. I've got the shallow water layer underneath the base land layer but above my frame which right now has the base color for my ocean. So all I'm going to do is go over here to the pencil tool and I'm going to draw a shape around each one of these islands. That's something of a generalized outline. Not going to be nearly as specific as the shoreline, just want to create a new shape around it that is close to the shape of the island. Now you're going to fill that with a lighter shade of blue. We want something that uh, is very different from our base color. And I'm going to turn off the stroke. I don't want one that's quite so gray. Maybe that. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to repeat that process for this island. Now you would repeat the process for as many different islands as you have or for all of your coastline and so forth. I'm going to create that in here. Make sure you're happy with the look and then fill it in with that color. While I'm here, I'm going to go over to my swatches and make sure that I go ahead and make a color swatch for this shallow water. So I will open up my swatches, drop down, make sure that my color is selected, it is, it's up front, and say new, and we will call it shallow water. That way I can always get back to exactly that color. Oh, and let me make sure that it goes inside my color group for this map. Now let me stop right there and just say that some people will like this effect. Some people won't want on their map for the color to be blurred. Some people may want to create a stepped look and have a variety of different colors going out into the ocean. I've seen maps like that that uh, use that particular technique and that may be exactly what you want. So you may be able to build a very nice looking map without using uh, a blurring effect. But we're going to continue with that and I know I haven't done the uh, shoreline right there. I'm going to show you the shoreline here in just a second because there's something that's special that's going to go along with it. But for now, I'm just going to select everything in the shallow water layer, and then I'm going to go up to Effect and drop down. Now, Illustrator provides a huge number of different effects for us to use. Part of being really good at uh, cartography and also graphic design in general when you're talking about vector-based art is to understand all of these different uh, effects in, that are available inside the program. They give you a tremendous amount of power. They make it very easy to create certain kinds of effects that you don't want to have to or can't just draw. You can simplify all kinds of procedures if you can understand how to use these different uh, effects in here and understand what they are. Now we're not going to be going over all of these in this particular course. You're really just going to have to sit down and play with them to figure out what they do and when you might be interested in using one to achieve some kind of cartographic effect. But what we're going to do is we're going to drop down and go down here to blur. And even under blur as you can see there are three different kinds of blur that we have. We're going to choose this one right here, the Gaussian blur. And when we choose that, we get another dialog box that will tell us what kind of radius we would like on our blur. We can go ahead and choose the preview, and it will generate a preview of what this is going to look like. 
and you should see, there we go, that the larger you make the blur radius, the more this particular tool blurs everything in that layer that we have selected. I sort of like the way that looks, I think, so I'm going to say OK, and then select off of everything. Ah, now I have the blur around the islands, and it sort of looks like shallower water that goes out to deeper water. I really like that look. Some people will start off with something that's almost white, and make that very thin around all of the islands and blur that and then go out to a little bit darker blue and then a little bit darker blue until you get to the base color of your ocean. You can also reverse this if you want to make it look like some areas are deeper than others and start blurring particular patches in the oceans that get deeper than your base color blue. Of course, you can pull in actual bath uh, bathymetry, actual data about the depths of the ocean once we get into integrating this with actual data sets. And you certainly don't want to give the impression with your artistic effect that you are actually portraying sophisticated bathymetric information. But as long as you're just using different kinds of effects for artistic effect and it's clear that's what they are, or you're using them to establish figure in the land uh, versus the water, establishing figure is very important in the theory and practice of cartography, which will get talked about in, in dedicated courses. But th then you can get away with using these kinds of artistic effects. You can really tell right now that it's making those islands pop. Those islands are really popping out at you and you can tell that what's important in this map is the land, is those islands. Let's do the coastline here. I'm just going to repeat the process but then show you a couple of items that make the... I'm going to exaggerate out here outside the frame that make doing this a little bit more difficult uh, than the uh, islands. Not really more difficult, but just one of those things that you have to pay attention to uh, as far as detail goes. Now you're probably going to be much more careful about drawing yours in here than I am. This is behind, so I'm not going to worry about what the back side looks like. I'm just going to connect it. Now I have this shape. I'm going to use my swatch so I know that I'm using my color. And there we go. Now of course, as you notice and as I intentionally drew out for you, you can see that here and then also down there at the bottom my shape overlaps my frame. That's very bad. Our standard procedure for taking care of that Let's do that. I'm going to lock the shallow water layer, unlock the frame, make a quick copy of it, lock it again, turn on shallow water, paste it in front so I know that it's exactly uh, where it is on the other layer. I will turn off the interior and then select both. And then use the Pathfinder tool to come up with the intersection. There is my shape. Let me turn off the land just as far as visually goes for a moment so you should now see uh, the shape that I've got. That's exactly what I want. It did change up the color. Fortunately I have the swatch saved so I'm going to turn off the stroke and then go back and adjust my color. And now there is my water shape. I'll turn back on the base land now I want to make sure I blur that layer at the exact same amount. You'll notice that if I go under effect, the last effect that I used is right here and if I clicked there it would turn the dialog box back on. But if I go up here at the top, the exact same, the last effect that I used is still up here at the very top and it's got the exact same specifications in the dialog box that I last used stored up here. So if I just click right there, I can very, very easily do exactly what happened previously at the exact same dialog box specifications. Now, let's look at that. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. That's, that's really going to be a, a great effect on this map. But what I want to show you now, I'm going to zoom in up here to this corner. I hope you can see that. There is still that color spilling over the edge. I wanted to make sure that I went through the Pathfinder procedure first to really show you that even though the path is clipped perfectly to that frame, when I blurred it I have a little bit of the color spilling over the edge. How do I fix that? Well, there might be a couple of ways right here, but I want to show you how to use a clipping mask that will take care of that problem. 
I'm, I'm, what I need is another copy of the frame. So I'm going to select the frame and then lock that layer and go back and then paste in front so I have the frame in there again. What I want to do is make a clipping mask with the frame. So I'm going to select the frame and I'm also going to select the object that I want to have masked. All I have to do is right click and say make clipping mask. When I say make clipping mask, anything that is outside of the shape that is the clipping mask is no longer shown. It's not clipped, it's not cut in any kind of way, it's just turned off visually so you cannot see it. So if I say make clipping mask, since I have that frame sitting on top, it's going to use that frame copy to mask whatever it is I had selected. Now if I go up here, hopefully you will be able to tell a difference. I can right here. It's a light blue anyway that we were masking off. Uh, but I can definitely tell right now that the color out there is absolutely not shown. Let me make it a little bit more dramatic example just for the sake of example. Let me fit on screen and then go over here and select that and let's make it a very dark red. Now, now you can very easily see that I've got that shade. I went back and I undid the clipping mask and you can see how that red color is spilling over outside of the frame. That was happening with the blue but it's a little bit easier to see here with the red. So if I repeat my procedure, let me just do that right here. Edit, paste in front, select the frame, and that red frame is sitting on top, make clipping mask. Now the red haze is gone because I successfully mask it off and that color isn't going over outside. Very important technique to know. A, the blur tool can create some fantastic effects for you. Play around with it. Also play around with the other kinds of blurs. Also very important is the uh, clipping mask. It's going to help you in all different kinds of situations, including situations like this, when you're getting color someplace you don't want it. So keep those different tools in mind. Go play with them. Come up with something awesome. I will see you next lesson.